Hello, and welcome to my capstone presentation. My name is Diane Byington, and I am a candidate in the Educational Specialist Degree Program in Instructional Technology at Kennesaw State University. I also have a Master of Arts in Teaching from Georgia College and State University, and my undergraduate degree is a Bachelor of Science in Business Accounting from Liberty University. I am in my 11th year teaching business education at Rutland High School in Macon, Georgia. In addition to teaching, I serve as the CTAE Department Chair. I am an advisor for the Future Business Leaders of America Club and the National Technical Honor Society. I also serve as the Assistant Volleyball Coach. The title of my capstone is Integrating Technology into the High School Classroom. The problem that led to the design of my capstone is the current school continuous improvement plan does not address technology needs within our school. Teachers are currently using technology, mainly Microsoft Word, to prepare their lesson plans and create assessments. Some are using technology, such as YouTube videos and PowerPoint presentations for instructional delivery. All teachers use technology to perform non-instructional tasks, such as attendance and grading. There is a need for teachers to integrate technology into their instruction and utilize digital learning strategies with the students. The goal is for the students to be using technology. The goal of this project was to provide teachers with an online archive of technology tools and instructional tutorials and resources available for teachers to access at their convenience. It was hoped that as the teachers learned about the technology tools and integrated them into their instruction, the student's technology use would increase and student achievement would increase. The plan for this project consisted of creating a technology resource page on the school website in a section titled Technology Resources for Teachers. Teachers would be able to access links to interactive educational web 2.0 tools, tutorials about how to use the tools, and videos about how to implement digital learning tools in the classroom. The effectiveness of this project was to be evaluated a couple of different ways. In order to assess the effectiveness of the technology tools, I wanted to conduct informal observations of teachers and students using the tools. In addition, using pre and post surveys for teachers and speaking with teachers individually, I hope to gather quantitative data to determine the effectiveness of the project. The capstone project deviated from the original proposal in a couple of ways. The first was the timeline changed due to a couple of different issues. Our school is guided by district goals and initiatives that override school goals. The overarching district initiative for the 2019-2020 school year was to get students reading on grade level. The focus of professional learning for teachers would be learning and implementing literacy strategies. As a result, professional development for the school year would be focused on the goal of learning literacy strategies, implementing the strategies, and analyzing the effectiveness and reflecting on these literacy strategies. In addition, we had an administrative change at our school with a new principal and two new assistant principals. After consulting with my mentor, we decided I would still be able to create a web page for teachers to access different digital tools and resources. However, because of the laser-like focus on literacy strategies, getting students reading on grade level administering county benchmark tests and STAR 360 tests to determine and evaluate students' Lexile levels, there was not an opportunity to present professional learning and coach or mentor teachers. Furthermore, as the spring of 2020 semester progressed, schools closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. As a result, the focus shifted from providing technology tools for teachers to implement into their instruction, to providing resources, tutorials, instructional videos, and tools for teachers to use for distance e-learning. Additionally, at the start of the spring 2020 semester, I was able to administer surveys to teachers to establish what their needs were regarding technology, what types of resources they were interested in, what did they want to do with the technology, 
How could they implement different technology tools into their instruction? The information gathered from these surveys guided my research. Although the capstone experience did not follow the original proposal, I was able to create a repository of digital tools and resources for teachers to access. Furthermore, as I started researching and looking at different technology tools and resources, I realized instead of posting resources, tutorials, and links on a website, I could use Padlet to display each technology tool in a visual way. This capstone is ongoing. As we learned, our school's last day will be May 1st. The remainder of May will be spent on professional development activities for teachers. Using the technology tools and resources that are posted in Padlet, I will be able to assist other teachers as they utilize and implement different technology tools, not only for the remainder of this year, but into next year as well. Furthermore, as I continue to receive input from teachers, and find and research new tools and resources, I will continue to update the information. This will continue to be a useful resource for teachers at our school, especially if we are unable to return to school in the fall. The key takeaway for me from this capstone experience is flexibility and patience. What is the saying, the best laid plans? I learned although it is possible to have a good plan, a good outline, and a vision Sometimes other people cannot support that vision due to time conflicts or constraints or other initiatives taking precedence. As I reflected on my original proposal, I realized some of my objectives were quite ambitious and perhaps unattainable in the timeline I proposed. I was reminded how important it is to identify the objectives before starting the instructional design process. As Riser and Dempsey write, Educators and other instructional designers need to first identify the curriculum or course goals before initiating any kind of instructional design. I was reminded that creating a partnership with the people you are working with is essential when trying to implement new initiatives. Throughout the process, I was grateful to have a mentor who worked with me and guided me as unexpected events happened. I learned creating relationships is a key to getting buy-in from those you will be working with. As a technology leader, I need to be knowledgeable and skillful when it comes to knowing and using technology. However, it is also essential to establish relationships not only with teachers, but also with school staff, administration, and sometimes district leaders. I learned that following Jim Knight's partnership approach can lead to establishing successful relationships and building trust with colleagues. Being able to conduct needs assessments to determine strengths and areas for growth, create surveys, and analyze data is another skill a technology leader should have. Additionally, a working knowledge of sound pedagogical practices and learning theories is essential as we seek to help others implement technology into their teaching practices. As Riser and Dempsey write, in order to integrate technology, teachers need to have a general knowledge about technology, how to use both hardware and software, as well as how technology can be used to support teaching and learning. By creating an online archive of technology tools for teachers, I demonstrated I have the knowledge, skills, and dispositions to create, support, and manage effective digital learning environments. As I selected and evaluated digital learning tools and resources, I was able to communicate and collaborate with other teachers and help them learn to use digital tools as we transitioned to e-learning. In this way, I was not only able to develop an online archive, but also help facilitate the use of online and digital content by other teachers. Although I was able to evaluate the effectiveness and usefulness of the digital tools archive by sending a survey asking for teacher input and talking with teachers due to circumstances discussed earlier, I was not able to observe or assess the impact of teachers using these tools as Harold and Bynum write, successful student use of technology in education hinges on knowing how to manage technology efficiently and overcoming barriers that come with integrating technology. Simply equipping schools and classrooms with technology is not the panacea for improving student achievement. I have realized through this process, sometimes we learn the most when we overcome barriers.